Okay, see all the red marks? That tells you um, all the survivors we have to pick up. Oh no. The ABS plays NES and Famicom uh, cards. And you can also play Famicom disc, disc System if you have the RAM expansion plugged into it. So it's basically just um, it's FPGA, which it just it replicates the hardware of the NES uh, more accurately. It's, so it's not technically emulation. It's hardware emulation, not software emulation, if that makes sense. So you know when you use an emulator on your PC, it's a program, a software that is trying to emulate the uh, hardware, but you notice like it can be glitchy and it's not really because it's not really the hardware. It's just some software pretending to be this. That's why it's called emulation, it's emulating it. But they des designed new um, motherboards and a new way of creating, a, creating hardware that exactly or almost exactly replicates the NES. So it basically tricks the um, computer into thinking that it's actually an NES. That's what FPGA is. So that's what the ABS is. So I wanted a system that played NES games the best way possible through HDMI and that's why I got this. If I was to get a regular NES with a like HDMI mod or all that, it would have been super expensive. So it's like for the same price I can get this thing. So I um, chose to get an ABS. I hope I explained that right because I don't know what I'm talking about. If you get a repro. Uh, well, what happens is when you get a repro cartridge, what they do is they're putting the ROM on the uh, board so you're running you are running an actual game because that, that's how the game would be uh, originally they, uh, they they take the uh, they take the ROM the program they put it on the on the board and they put it in a cart and there you go so that's basically what a repro is it just takes the ROM it dumps it onto the uh, board so a repro is uh, pretty much exactly like an original game it just has to do with value, you know, like uh, the original cartridge is worth more uh, than a repro, but that's purely collector's, um, a collector's thing. There's not any technical difference as far as I'm aware of. Okay, I have four more comrades to get. Look at the map. Okay. So there's one to the left, and then one... If you go to the website for the ABS, it explains it better than I just did. Um, it will explain what the ABS does. It is basically similar to what the uh, analog NT does. Just analog NT is insanely expensive. It's like five hundred dollars or something. Some people say the uh, analog NT is better than the ABS. I don't know about that. I'm worried about buying a repro of uh, not eBay. I know what I'm looking for mostly when it comes to eBay. Yeah, that's the problem. Sometimes like you. You intend to get the original cart and you end up getting a repro. 
and you're like, oh, I didn't want a repro. Uh, I think a sign that it's a repro is it if it's a very rare game and it's you're getting it for a cheap price. Like if it's an extremely rare game, like Little Samson or something, and they're charging like 20 or 30 bucks, that's a repro. thing was going to come at me. Let's try that again. Oh, well, let me show you the, um, <clears throat> the stuff that the, uh, if I press select and I press A and B, yeah, it takes me back to the main menu. This is the ABS uh, main menu. And if you notice, there's, um, there's a scoreboard. So you, you can actually hook up the ABS to the internet and upload your high scores or something. I haven't done that yet. But um, yes, he's USB not connected. And then uh, these are the video options. So you can change the video mode, the aspect ratio. You can change how wide you want the um, the screen, uh, vertical scan line. You can hide like the left side of the screen sometimes. But on CRTs, you wouldn't be able to see the left side, and um, this will show it or hide it. Extra sprites I have on. Basically, the NES had a sprite limit. This goes beyond that limit, so you get less sprite flicker and load time. Um, I don't know expansion value. You could choose different palettes. I like this one. Uh, interpolation, I'm not really sure what that is. Um, input, you can choose to have turbo, which I should turn on for this game. I should have turbo on. You could, how, how uh, fast you want the turbo. And uh, autoplay, I'm not sure what that means. And uh, there's four score because this thing has four ports. So you can play, there. yes, they were four player NES games, like uh, Friday the 13th that I have. Um, what else was four players? I think RC Racing. Um, so you, you can do that. Um, then there's built-in Game Genie codes, which is awesome. So for this, I, um, I could do eight lives infinite time, start with fireball. Uh, I might do eight lives, that sounds helpful. Um, and then, yeah. Yeah, that's helpful having eight lives. I find that turbo very slow. I should have done like faster turbo. Okay. I got laser. The best weapons in this game are the fireball and the laser. So this game um, was originally uh, in the arcades. I like the arcade version. Um, and it was ported to everything. So you got the NES and it was ported to the um, Game Gear, the Master System. Um, there was PC ports, I think. Um, I'm sure it was on Commodore 64. Stick with the laser. I did fireball before. I forgot what S is.
fire is good. It just doesn't have much of a reach. Like, fire is just like a flamethrower. Check the map. Oh, just one more. Very good. One of the few NES games that actually had a map. This is nice. Uh, the original Zelda had a map, which was nice. On the overworld and in the dungeons. And that was definitely a rare thing. Metroid could have used a map. Definitely. Okay, we must escape. All right, no problem, Stitch. stick with a fireball. Uh, you're, you, you can close this gap so that enemies don't spawn back. Just takes a lot of hits. Wow, look, it's still. Should I bother? I'm wasting a lot of time here. I should just go, right? Oh, I got a free for that, so I guess that was worth it, right? That just takes way too long. I'm not doing that again. Maybe I should...
Oh no. I think you, yeah, you die if you go through there. What's S? Oh, the starting gun. Ugh. Straight down and then to the right. I'm gonna pick up any gun I see, it's better than this thing. second boss is. Laser, that works. What the heck is this thing? Oh, I passed it. Do that all over again. Okay. The problem is with the gun is like you can only it only hits when you're really close, which is weird. So like you're hitting it from afar and it's just not counting, it's not, um, there's no hit detection. Like you literally have to be all up in it for it to um, count as a hit, which is annoying. I actually really like the uh, Game Gear version of this, believe it or not. It's actually really good. My favorite is the uh, arcade port. I mean, not, it's not a port. The original was arcade. Uh, the arcade version is my favorite. But um, Game Gear version is pretty good. So like the NES version is, is nice having it on the NES, but this is not the best version of Alien Syndrome, in my opinion. This was like a hastily done Tengen port. Yes, that was a completely different game. That was like a remake. I haven't played that, but it was like a remake uh, for the the Wii. I don't think that got good reviews, but. Uh...
This game is pretty good two players though. Like I kind of wish, I, I, they're not going to put this on the NES app because it's a Tengen game, but um, it would be really cool to, because this, this is two players at the same time, and that, that, that's perfect for the uh, Switch Online. Oh, just one more. Oh, no. Well, that's not good, because one hit and I'm dead. I, I don't, I'm not going to beat the boss with one life, that's for sure. But, uh, let's try it. Oh. And if I stay here for a little bit, and I can get a one-up? I know time's going down, but I have plenty of time to get to the exit. What? These guys are coming. Stop it. I want at least just one. One. Well. Wow. Nope. Alright. It was worth a shot. Game over. <laughs> 